Good morning, everyone. Hi. I'm Sheila Umberger, and I'm the director of the City Library, so we're very happy to see all these faces. I see so many familiar faces. Um, this is truly the goal is to have a community discussion with a wonderful, amazing community author and a community space. So I know the Grandins, I want to thank the Grandin, they're celebrating their 90th year in business. So, yeah. <laughs> so Beth Macy is the author of the critically acclaimed and New York Times best-selling books, Factory Man, True Vine, and Dope Stick, Dealers, Doctors, and Drug um, Company That Addicted America. Macy serves as an executive producer and writer on the acclaimed Hulu limited television series, Dope Stick, which is based on her book. Her latest book is Raising Lazarus, The Search for Hope and Justice and the Future of America's Overdose Crisis, the critical next installment in the story of the defining disaster of our era. So I would like to introduce Doug and Ben and Beth <laughs> and uh, say thank you so much. So, um, so the new book is about solutions, um, and it's about people uh, scaling barriers to bring life-saving treatment to folks in addiction, many of whom are homeless and doing sex work in order to get their drugs so they won't be dope sick. One of the women I profile, and I'm going to read two pages, uh, Ben asked me to read, and it is my favorite part of the book. So Brooke Parker is a uh, Ryan White outreach worker. She, she works with the harm reduction group on her free time, which she doesn't have any. And, uh, but during the day, she's a hospital social worker, and her job is to tell people uh, to identify and, and test people for HIV and then to locate them and to try to get them into care. But often they've moved because many of them are living homeless. And so this is just my day with Brooke. At an encampment behind a nearby IHOP, Brooke scanned the grounds for the remaining three positives on her list. But her search came to a halt when she spotted Kyle, a 45-year-old man in a wheelchair who needed her immediate help. He'd picked maggots from his feet earlier in the day. Not only was Kyle in pain from the severe injection-related infections on his lower legs and feet, he was also dope sick. Brooke texted a picture of his wounds to a coworker and physician's assistant who confirmed that Kyle's infection wouldn't clear without IV antibiotics. Kyle needed to be admitted to the hospital. But when Brooke offered to take him, he shook his head. He'd spent 18 hours in the hospital's ER for the same infections a week earlier, and quote, they did nothing for me. Brooke sighed and apologized, then sighed some more. She squatted at Kyle's feet, put on rubber gloves, and spent the next half hour applying packet after packet of triple antibiotic ointment on Kyle's legs and feet. Oh baby, I'm so sorry, she said every time he winced. Kyle wept openly as a friend of his, a woman in a short skirt with smeared red lipstick, walked up and handed him a Pepsi. That ointment ain't gonna cut it, honey, she told Brooke. I was an LPN for 17 years. Kyle's friend paused for dramatic effect. And then I got married, she said, spreading her arms with the timing of a stand-up comedian. And hence, a homeless hooker. I was just wondering if you could speak a little bit about what you're seeing right now here in Southwest Virginia with the opioid crisis and how you hope that your book can play a role in defining a solution, whether that be harm reduction or what you hope to see come out of that. Mm -hmm. I don't have the up-to-date numbers, um, but I know it's just continuing to get worse. I know more people are starting to know what harm reduction is, and that is catching on, which is great. You know, I just gave an example about Dr. Burton and Carillion really stepping up their game. I, I still know there are a lot of judges in the region that won't allow MAT in their drug courts. And um, I think that's a shame. Um, 
we, I tell the story in the book of a judge in rural Tennessee, East Tennessee, uh, one of the hardest hit places, one of the first hit places, who is a tough on crime prosecutor in his former life. His name's Dwayne Sloan. And he's like, we gotta lock them up. They don't deserve buprenorphine, they're bad people. And then he and his wife adopt a baby with NAS and they really get to know the biological mother and they watch her struggle. And he realizes she can't do it on her own. She can't do it without the medication. Um, not that the medication isn't a be all end all, but it's the portal to getting them well enough where they're not worried about being dope sick every day. Beth, uh, thank you for taking the time today. Um, thank you, even more importantly, for helping us to take that deeper dive um, and not only understand what evidence shows us is, is better care, but uh, presenting us with uh, those human stories that help us really try to understand, and it is work to understand, um, so that we can care and be a better community. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks to the Raleigh Court Group for getting this going.